In this video, we are going to look at the binary fractions again, but from a slightly different angle. I will show you an alternative method to convert decimal fractions into binary fractions, which will work in most cases. I will show you some examples, and again I will draw your attention to the limitations of this method. So, let's look at an example. So what happens if you would need to convert 13.3125 into binary? From here on, I'm going to split the number. I'm going to convert the whole number and the fraction part separately. The whole number for 13, we're going to use the normal way of converting decimal numbers into binaries. So use the place value table, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. So what combination of these makes up 13? Well, 8 plus 4 makes 12, plus 1 makes 13. So the whole part of this decimal fraction is 1, 1, 0, 1. How about the decimal part? What I'm going to do now, I'm going to just separately write down the decimal part. And the trick is here to keep doubling the number. So what's the double of 3, 1, 2, 5? Double of 5 is 10, carry the 1. Double of 2 is 4 plus 1 makes 5. Double of 2 is 2. And double of 3 is 6. Now, what happens in here is that I do not have any overflow into the whole number part of this, of this fraction. Therefore, I'm going to record a zero after the radix point. Then, I'm going to keep doubling. Obviously, double of zero is zero, so I don't even need to think about that. 2 times 5 is 10, carry the 1. 2 times 2 is 4 plus 1 makes it 5. 2 times 6 is 12, so I record the 2 and the 1 is an overflow. So this digit, now I'm going to pick up and record as the second digit of the binary fraction. Imagine like if you were picking this one up from here, record it here, so from now on it disappears. The next step that I'm going to do, I'm going to double again, but without the whole part. So I'm just going to double 5, which makes 10. Double of 2 is 4 plus 1 is 5. And there again, I have got no overflow into the whole parts. So I'm going to record a 0 here. Double again. 2 times 5 is 10. There is an overflow. This is my last digit here because from here on, I've got no more fractional parts. So you stop when you end up with a zero in the fractional parts. Now pulling the two together, 13.3125 in decimal is the same as 1101 radix point 0101 in binary. The second example is 9.1875. Again, separate the number into whole and fractional part. The whole part is 9, which is 8 plus 1. So 8, no 4, no 2, and a 1. The decimal part now. 0.1875. 875. Let's keep doubling it. 2 times 5 is 10, carry 1. 2 times 7 is 14 plus 1 makes it 15, carry the 1. 2 times 8 is 16 plus 1 is 17, carry the 1. 2 times 1 is 2 plus 1 is 3. Again, I did not have any overflow into the whole number part, so the first digit behind the radix point that I'm going to record is a 0 double again. 2 times 5 is 10, carry the 1. 2 times 7 is 14, plus 1 makes it 15, carry the 1. 2 times 3 is 6, plus 1, 7. Again, no overflow into the whole part, so I'm going to record a 0 here. Double again. 2 times 
5 is 10, carry the 1. 2 times 7 is 14, plus 1 makes it 15. Now I have got an overflow in here, so I'm going to record this as the next digit after the radix point, and then double again. Don't forget that this one is not here anymore because I picked up and re uh, recorded it in here. So 2 times 5 is 10, so the next digit is 1 again. So pull the two things together, 9.1875 in decimal is the same as 1001 radix point 0011 in binary. The next number is 0 0.6875. Luckily, this number doesn't have any whole part, so we just need to concentrate on the decimal uh, fraction part. So I can just simply keep doubling this number. 2 times 5 is 10, carry 1. 2 times 7 is 14, plus 1 is 15, carry the 1. 2 times 8 is 16, plus 1 is 17, carry the 1. 2 times 6 is 12 plus 1 is 13, so I've got an overflow. So the first digit I'm going to record behind the radix point is 1. Double. 2 times 5 is 10, carry the 1. 2 times 7 is 14, plus 1 makes it 15, carry the 1. 2 times 3 is 6, plus 1 7. In this case I did not have an overflow, so the next digit after the radix point is 0. Double again. 2 times 5 10, carry the 1. 2 times 7 is 14, plus 1 makes it 15. Overflow, so the next digit is 1. Remember that's gone now and 0 uh, makes no difference there. 2 times 5 is 10, so it's 1.0. So we have got one more digit here, which is a 1. So 0 0.6875 in decimal as the same is 0 radix point 1011 in binary. Now let's look at a nice and easy decimal number, the one that we didn't quite know how to deal with at the end of the last video. So let's look at 3.4. So let's separate the number again into whole and fractional parts. So 3 is 2 plus 1, which is 1, 1. And the fractional part, let's just double. 2 times 4 is 0 0.8. So after the radix point, the first digit will be 0. 2 times 8 is 16. So 1.6, the next digit is 1. 2 times 6 is 12, so 2.1. Again, carry the 1. Double of 2 is 4, no carry. Double of 4 is 8, again no overflow. Double of 8 is 16, so I've got a 1 here now. Double of 6 is 12, I've got another 1 here now. Double of 2 is 4, put down a 0. And hold on, I'm repeating myself. Look. 0 0.4, 0.8, 6, 2, 4, 8, 6, 2, 4, 8, 6, 2. So this simple decimal fraction 3.4 is an infinitely recurring binary fraction. So that again shows you some difficulties when it comes to converting decimal fractions to binary fractions. So this would be 3.4 in decimal would be 1, 1 radix point 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 places. As I mentioned it in the last video, this is something that's fundamentally inherent property of the binary number system. We can't really do anything about it, but by using more binary digits to represent the decimal numbers, we can minimize this problem. Let's look at another simple example, 
separate it again to whole and fractional part. 4 is just 1, 0, 0. Remember this is 1, 2 and 4. And the fractional part will be 0 0.715. Now let's keep doubling it. 2 times 5 is 10, carry the 1. 2 times 1 is 2 plus 1 is 3. 2 times 7 is 14. So I've got one of the overflow. So the first digit in after the radix point will be 1. Now those two unnecessary anymore. So double again. 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times 4 is 8. So there is no overflow. This digit will be at 0. Double it again. 2 times 6 is 12. Carry the 1. 2 times 8 is 16 plus 1 makes 17. I've got an overflow here now. So that's number 1. Double it again. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 7 is 14. So next digit is 1. Double again. That digit's gone. 2 times 4 is 8. 2 times 4 is 8. No overflow. So this digit will be a 0. Double. 2 times 8 is 16, carry the 1. 2 times 8 is 16, plus 1 is 17. So there is 1 as an overflow. That's gone now. Double again. 2 times 6 is 12, carry the 1. 2 times 7 is 14, plus 1 makes it 15. So I've got a 1 as an overflow. Double again. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 5 is 10. Overflow, so that's another 1 in there times 2 is 8 0 0 0 is the next digit well I don't know about you but I'm getting exhausted in here and look there is not even a sign anywhere for uh, repetition so this fraction looks even worse than the previous one and again just look at it how simple this is in decimal so yes the binary number system indeed have got quite a few limitations which can get quite a bit annoying well, what kind of things have we discovered about the binary number system? Well, basically we know that not all decimal fractions can be expressed as a finite binary fraction. Unfortunately, this cannot be avoided, but can be minimized by using more bits. Also, if you look at the examples through the video again, you can see that the radix point is different for different numbers. So the position of the radix point is changing from number to number. That can get quite confusing for the computer, but luckily for this problem, we do have a solution. And that is the floating point notation, which we will talk about in more details in one of the following videos. For now, I've prepared some examples for you. So please look at them, try them, and you will find the answers later. So these are the practice questions. And here are the answers.